Hey everyone, it's Jim from Vowels and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in Tube Lab number 107, I'm going to do an update of the GU50 kit monoblock. Now, and we're going to talk about test builders. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. The design and testing phase of the GU50 is complete, and the prototype builds have proven to not only sound great, but are also highly reliable with no failures whatsoever. The only problem I found is that I needed to change the size of the primary fuse. Um, but a couple of modifications have come out of all of this testing. And let's take a look at them. So the first thing I noticed is that the top plate around the power tube was getting fairly warm. And after hours of operation, it was getting fairly hot. It wasn't getting so hot that it was a really a big problem. But I think, well, I know that for the, um, for the production version, we're going to put series of ventilation holes around the GU50. And it's not surprising that this tube gets so darn hot because it's running in pure class A. Now, pure just means that we don't have any feedback. Zero, zilch. Can you tell I don't like feedback? But the class A part is what we really should focus on. Class A means that the power stage is running at 100% duty cycle. What does that mean? Well, it means that the power tube is turned on at maximum 100% of the time, full time, <laughs> all the time. So it's not surprising that this area gets quite warm. So I've actually already, I spent yesterday afternoon making up um, uh, the top plates for the test builders. And I've got a sample right here. Let me go grab it and I'll show you what we're up to. So this is a raw top plate. It hasn't had the flashing taken off. It hasn't got its um, its um, its brushed finish applied or its hand wax surface. This is the way it looks after, right after machining. And this is how that series, let me see if I get you on camera so you can see it. That's how that series of holes is gonna look. I think it's gonna look quite good. And what it's going to do is it's going to allow cool room air to enter at the base of the plinth. There's always a gap here at the bottom. And of course, uh, warm air rises. So we'll have a convection effect. More cool room air will enter at the bottom and the warm air will rise. And that's gonna go a long way to keeping this area cool. The other thing that I noticed in the design in the prototype build is that the plinth is a little bit small for the size of this monster choke. It just fits, it fits, but it just fits. And I don't like things that just fit. So I've made the plinths uh, 3 eighths of an inch deeper for the GU50 kits. The standard base size, the width and the length or depth or whatever are all identical. It's just the height will change a little bit. I think the amps will actually look quite a bit better. It's a heavy, it's a heavy monoblock. It's, you know, it's a bigger powered amp. So I think a little taller is gonna look nice and it'll, it'll give more space in here. It'll help keep the amp cool. And I think overall it's, it's probably a good thing. The other thing that, uh, that really started to bother me is that the output transformer that we use for both the URI and now for the GU50 has two taps. It has a four ohm and an eight ohm tap, which is great. But I normally, to save money, I guess, uh, I've only put two speaker posts in the back here. One's the negative post and one's your positive post. So let me show you. So you've got to change your wire depending on what speaker system you've got hooked up. So right now I've got the four ohm tap on and the 8 ohm would normally would just go down and get it get tagged to a little mount on the bottom of the plate here and zip tied on. Um, but you know, it's a pain in the ass having to change them back and forth. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to move everything over a little bit and we're going to have a negative post, a 4 ohm tap, and an 8 ohm tap. Let me show you on the actual, let me get this turned over so it's safe. Let me show you on um, what will become kit build number one. I've got the plinth right here. So that's all we've done. I just had to make up a new jig and respace everything. And I think that's going to be a nice little improvement. It didn't add that much cost. You know, anytime I can make improvements to the performance, to the looks, or to the practicality of these kits, especially if it doesn't cost a lot of money. Um, I mean, that's the big thing with these kits. I'm always trying to keep the price point as low as possible to make them affordable. Um, I'm going to go for it. Okay. So let's talk about test builders. If you're interested, let me know and I'll put you on the list. We only need three test builders and I already have two interested uh, builders in the file, but this isn't a firm commitment. If when the email comes announcing the availability of the test kits and you've changed your mind, that's fine. No worries. We'll probably have more people interested than we have amps. Now, if you find the um, if you find the amps to be expensive, too expensive to buy, um, to buy a match pair, that's fine. You can buy one. We've, from the very moment I started designing this kit, I wanted to bring these higher powered monoblocks in under a thousand dollars, and currently, uh, we're good. But you know, inflation is a huge bugger, and um, that could change. But at the moment, we're good. So. If all you can do is is buy one amp uh, as a test builder, that is going to be perfectly fine. Just remember that the uh, output transformers are matched at the factory in pairs for us. So let me know if you're planning on coming back and buying uh, in, the, in a month or two your other channel. And I'm going to put your name on the matching output transformer so that we can send you the correct transformer. Um, so, you know, being a test builder can be a lot of fun. The only commitment you make is that you need to build the kit exactly as it's designed. If you like modding stuff, just wait for the production version to come out and have fun with that. We ask that you use our online builders forum if you have any questions or problems. And at the end of the build, we send out a very brief questionnaire. For us, one of the big things we get from test builders is the identification of any difficult parts of the build. And that allows us to modify the build series because I build, um, I build kit number one, I film it, and that becomes essentially the building manual. But we modify that building manual over time as we, as we can make improvements to, you know, very aspect, various aspects of the build or methods of assembly. And the other thing that uh, test builders really help with is confirming that our parts list is correct. <laughs> There's going to be about 150 parts in the GU50. The preamps have, I think, 250 parts. So, you know, we have a, you know, a very detailed bill of materials with inventory um, pick lists for all the various parts. But it's, it's really uh, helpful to have actual builders uh, confirm that our, our, our parts are correct. Now, I always try and include extra of everything, all the small parts, extra wire. I don't want anybody building a kit to ever be stressed and think, I'm going to run out of wire. No, no, no. It should be extra of everything. Now, you pay full price for the kits. The kits never go on sale. And the reason for that is simple. The margin on the kit is just so tight. There's just no way to discount them. But in return for your help, we ship your kit with a free premium set of tubes. Okay, so let me know if you're interested. And let's clear the decks and see what came in this week. Well, a lot of premium tubes. But we're only going to look at one really nice quad. Hang on. You're around here somewhere. Give me a second. Ah. Here's the 
here they are. Let me just get them out so we can look at them. And let's zoom in. Okay, now these are interesting. Have a look at this. Let me see if you can guess what these are. You probably already figured it out. So these have a rebrand HP or Hewlett Packard. And it says by Amperex. Now, who is Hewlett Packard? Well, back in the day, they manufactured test equipment. So I've got, um, I've had a, um, a um, I've had a couple of pieces of bench equipment by HP, I think. Uh, one of them was a frequency generator. I forget what the other one was. Anyways, uh, that's how they got their start. Today, of course, they're well known for high quality uh, printers. In fact, in our business, we use a high speed um, laser printer that works just amazingly well. Um, anyways, so Amperex. Amperex was the brand name that Philips used for tubes they sold in the U.S. Ah, so now you're starting to think, Jim, these look a lot like double top getter Mullard XF2s. And you would be right. So Philips, which owned the brand name Amperex, owned Mullard as well. Okay, so now everything makes sense. And there should be, look at that, made in Great Britain, there should be a date code on these things. And there is. Let me see if I can get it on camera for you. I think you can see it. There it is. XF2. Sometimes they get rubbed off. Sometimes they fade. And there should be a capital B. That's for Blackburn. That's Blackburn, England. That's the Mullard, one of the main Mullard plants, was one of the main Mullard plants in the UK. And then after the B, there's a date code or after the plant code. Sometimes we'll have other codes. I'm trying to remember them all. It's not coming to me. Anyways, there's a number of Mullard plants. Now, what's so interesting about this set is that uh, the person I got them from salvaged these from a piece of test equipment that had hardly been used, he said. And the, the quad came in testing I, I would call it a strong used uh, set. Now, if a set of tubes or even a single tube that we're testing tests new old stock, but it's clearly been used or looks lightly used, we never upgrade it. It always gets kicked down, back down into the used category. A lot of sellers, unfortunately, go the other way, <laughs> even to the point of making replace, they call them, uh, what do they call them? Reproduction boxes. I call them fake boxes because it's total BS, of course. If you got a used tube in a brand new reissue box, you still have a used tube. Anyways, uh, this would be a good deal. If you want to get into um, into the one of the greatest EL34, I, I would call it the greatest EL34 ever made, the Mullard XF2s. Um, this is going to be a good set. I know they're expensive, but and here's the big bot. Not that far from now will be our biggest sale of the year, Black Friday. We're going to talk more about that when we get closer. But the neat thing about Black Friday is that the discount at Black Friday applies for your entire purchase. The only thing that's not included are the kit amps, as I was just mentioning. The margin's just not big enough on kit amps to ever discount them. But all the premium stuff gets a full discount on the full price. So it's a great time to buy uh, expensive tubes. A lot of the really uh, high demand stuff goes in the first day. So anyways, I'll let you know when the sale starts, give you the heads up. And if you stay till the end, here's some discount codes to help you out. Um, and remember, I've got flat rate shipping of $20 around the world. And if your order is $150 or more, the shipping is on us. Stay safe, everyone. Have fun. This is Jim, missing Charles, saying goodbye. Cheers, everyone.